Hey, beer tubers! I'm here with my friend Chad of Chad's Beer Reviews, or Chad9976, <laughs> and he's doing a little collaboration beer with me of Schmaltz Brewing's Freak Toba Fest. This is actually perfect because I'm doing a series of Schmaltz Brewing's beers, and he's like, hey, let's do a collab. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, sure, let's do it. So yeah. we're going to be doing this. This wasn't in the pack that Henry gave me, so this is perfect to do it. So let me go ahead and open it up, and we'll show you how it is. Yep. Um, a very interesting brewery. Like their headquarters are in San Francisco, where you live, mm-hmm. but their beers are actually brewed half hour north of me in Saratoga. So it's oh, like, that this close? Is, yeah. Oh. Yeah. This wow. is a, it's a blood red lager. Mm-hmm. Uses six malts, six hops, and the ABV is six point six six percent. That's appropriate for you know two Christian guys to be re- reviewing. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, kind of wrong and doing it in a Stella Artois glass. Oh my gosh. I didn't know it was red. What the heck? Or maybe I forgot. Yeah. That is freaky. <laughs> yeah. I hope that's like real it looks like food coloring red though. You know, it doesn't it doesn't look like it doesn't look natural. Yeah, it has to be. I mean, cuz cuz it looks just like a, a Cassis lambic or a creek, right? And but even the carbonation's red, so it has or, to be or Good Magic point. Hat's Wacko. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely very malty smelling. Yeah, it almost it's, it's like if if you ever home brewed, it definitely has that 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 um like like the almost like what what do you say the uh like a partial mash when you do a partial mash the extract kind of has that extract kind of smell which but I doubt that they use extract. I almost get like a cranberry kind of smell on here. Maybe it's like psychosomatic because it looks like cranberry juice. Yeah, well, I, I think um, it's just because it's pretty sweet, and I think that's why yeah. I thought it was an extract because it definitely has that sweetness. Yeah, it's it's but, very malty. It has like that kind of lollipop kind of smell to it. Uh, it has like that very distinct lager smell to it. You know, like oh for you sure, know, smelling yeah. this, it's like yeah, it, you can smell it. it's a lager. I don't know, man. I, I think they, they must do something else to it. I don't know if it's just the, simply the food coloring, but it de- definitely has this slight fruity kind of smell. I mean. I'd be surprised yeah. if they didn't use any anything else, you yeah. know, aside from the standard four ingredients. Yep. Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. Whoa, weird. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's like, it's interesting. Yeah. It's it's like all over the place, but it's not it's not bad. Yeah, it has this. I I, I don't know about your bottle, but um, it has this slight sourness to it it's like a really bright sour bitterness yeah which makes me even more curious if they actually did use put berries in it or some sort it's weird hmm yeah there's like a slight like it like a, almost like a cranberry type tartness or sourness yeah, definitely does like you said it's all over the place I think so too because I'm getting this tangy sort of sourness to it. Yeah. But it's also malty, like very typical of Schmaltz Brewing's lagers. They're really malty, but it also has a lot of bitterness at the end. This yeah. Kind yeah, of dry yeah. bitterness, which I mean, I guess I'm guessing because they use six different hops in it. But you get you get bitterness with the whole palate, like from start to finish. Yeah, it's a pretty bitter lager, actually. Yeah. Like more than their their sword swaller IPA. Oh, IPA yeah. lager, IPL. It's yeah. just kind of like a one-size-fits-all bitterness, you know? Yeah, I mean, like a better term, one-dimensional bitterness. It doesn't yeah. really seem that heavy. Yeah, it's, it's definitely on uh, it's on the higher side for a lager, but it's, yeah. it's the, the overall body is light. And, I mean, it has, if anything, the body is, has more of this cranberry yeah. some, something. They have to have used fruits because I mean, it totally <laughs> tastes like it. But, so, what are your final thoughts on this beer and rating wise? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's it's good. It's not. It's interesting. It's not like amazing. It's interesting because it's you know pretty unique. But mm-hmm. you know, just because something's unique or original doesn't make, necessarily make it good. Um, right. But this is you know it's a nice kind of change of pace, easy to drink, lager. It's. It's kind of, you know, by the nature of it, though, it's like, what would be the situation to drink this in? Because I don't really, it doesn't really seem like something I would drink with a meal, and it's 
Like, it's sweet, but it's not really a dessert beer. So, I mean, it's a good beer just on its own. I'd probably give this, like, a 7 out of 10, you know, like a B, you know, just plain good. Yeah. What do you think? Um, uh, those are my thoughts. Uh, no. Uh, uh, no. Um, I, I think this, this is really ambiguous, I have to say. And this is coming from someone that likes all kinds of styles. I mean, even sours. I'm just, like, on a sour kick, like half of the craft beer world is. But yeah. this is just really strange, I must say. I, I think just the – I mean – if it is supposed to have this sour st- stinginess in it, you know, like how it stings your tongue, mm-hmm. and the maltiness and the really dry bitterness, it's just very confusing to me. And and this is coming from someone that I actually like almost all of Schmaltz Brewing stuff. I'm actually a fan, and yeah. I, I don't know, are, are you a fan of their stuff in general? Um, yeah, it's funny because they're right up the road, and I actually hardly ever drink their stuff. Well, that's like a Anchor Brewing is like a two-minute yeah. walk from my house, and I don't drink their stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, I really like the, uh, not the, yeah, the Genesis, no, not the Genesis, the other one, the Messiah Bold. Oh, yeah. But, um, and I've had their stuff, like, because they're at every beer fest around here, so I always have it at beer fest, and for the most part, I'm unimpressed by Schmuck. So, so, so in general, it's not like you're that big of a fan, but you gave it a 7 out of 10, which, that's, I mean, that's pretty good. It's yeah. like a B, B minus, right? Yeah, B. Yeah, I mean, right I, I, I'm going to give this, like... I don't know, more like a B minus. Like, and I, I, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame a person if they were to give this like a C or anything. Yeah. Like that, because it's just so strange, and they might be turned off by yeah. the by the sourness and the oddity of this, the character of this beer. So, I mean, it's like at most it's B minus for me. I mean, I wouldn't, I may go down to C plus even, but like that's kind of the general vicinity yeah. that I rate this. Yeah. I think that wraps up for the Coney Island series of Schmaltz Brewing's Freaktoberfest. Um, you may feel free to check it out. If not, I wouldn't blame you. <laughs> Thanks so much for Chad to doing uh, to doing this uh, collab. I'll check his channel out, and I'll see you guys in the next beer blog. Yep. Kung pai. Kung pai. <laughs> <laughs> kung pai. It's almost like Chinese now. Kung pai. <laughs> I like to have an order of kung pai, please. <laughs>